Right everyone, it is Finn here, welcome back to another video, and welcome to my Nations League Round 1 prediction video, where of course, as you can see on screen right now, we've got 8 fantastic games to talk about this match week, I mean, from Poland versus Wales, Spain versus Portugal, the list goes on of some great fixtures to look out for, I mean, you even got the likes of Belgium versus Netherlands, and Italy versus Germany. How's this good way? It's beautiful! What is not to love? I mean, when the Nations League comes around, I feel like people just complain that it's just more and more football to watch, which I mean, as a football lover, I definitely have no complaints whatsoever. Now, of course, I'm only going to be predicting the League A games for the Nations League, because otherwise, if I do, obviously, B League, C League, and D League, the video tends to be slightly too long. But of course, if you guys want me to do predictions for those leagues as well for the Nations League, let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, before we jump into the predictions, I've got some gigantic news for you guys that I think you want to hear. I got kittens! Okay, that's it. Now, did that add value to this video whatsoever? Probably not. But of course, jumping straight into the predictions, finally, game number one that we will be talking about will be Poland versus the likes of Wales. Now, of course, between these two teams, I feel like they are just so contrasting to one another. I mean, both of them have absolutely fantastic players within their squads. But of course, I feel like Poland, with fantastic players in their squad, they just seem to underperform every single time we see them, where Wales almost overperformed, to be honest with you. Now, of course, Wales obviously will be looking at the World Cup qualifications games as well. So, of course, they might be resting some of their great players but of course looking at a meeting between the likes of Poland and Wales as I said just looking at their form over the last few years I do think that I have to go with the likes of Wales for this competition as I said Poland you've got yourself some fantastic players from the likes of Bednarak you obviously have Matty Cash now you've got Robert Lewandowski we have uh, Robert Levan Lewandowski <laughs> You've got yourself the likes of Chesney, the list goes on. But you know what? As many times as I list the amount of fantastic players in your squad, you just seem to underperform every single time without failure, and something definitely needs to change. Whereas I said, looking at the likes of Wales, when they switch on, they are an absolutely fantastic team, and we've seen that in recent European tournaments, and I don't think there will be any exception this time around, and that's why I believe Wales should end up getting a win. And of course, my player to watch is going to be the likes of good old Gareth Bale. Of course, just won his fifth ever Champions League, although he didn't play too much part he's kind of like that kid that didn't take any part in a school project a project but ended up getting that a plus anyway but you know what at the end of the day we know when gareth bale when he plays for wales i mean it's almost as if he's playing golf he absolutely loves it and that is why he will be my player to watch now of course jumping into game number two we've got spain versus portugal now of course this is always such a fantastic game to watch obviously i mean the most recent fiction between these two teams that pops to mind will of course be the 2018 world cup and i define it as the game that broke down David De Gea for two years. Obviously, it was that 3-3 draw. Now, of course, looking at the game this time around, I really believe that a lot of things are pointing in Portugal's favour, to be honest with you. Now, of course, yes, they will be missing the likes of Ruben Diaz in defence, and that will, of course, be a massive loss for them. But they've still got some very, very solid players that they could put in those positions. Now, of course, it's when looking at the likes of Spain, you realise that they might have a few problems. Of course, the likes of Manchester City sent back. Emrick Laporte will be out. Unfortunately, he is injured at the moment, and that is a major just sent back loss for them. I mean, obviously the likes of Gerard Piquet doesn't play for them anymore. They don't really choose Sergio Ramos anymore. So defensively, Spain, you're getting a tiny bit thin, to be honest with you. And obviously in the midfield position, they're also missing the likes of Pedri, who in my opinion at the recent Euros was a standout player. He was absolutely fantastic in their midfield. So although Spain still have an absolutely brilliant team, missing quite a few key players, I do think Portugal will probably end up taking this one. And I am also going to maybe put it as a 1-2 win to be honest with you. Although, saying that, you can't underestimate them. Spain obviously got to the recent Nations League final. So, of course, once again, you definitely can't underestimate them. I mean, maybe a part of me is still grudged as a Manchester United fan to the fact that they don't pick David De Gea. I mean, that man is the only reason Manchester United didn't get relegated this season. What else does he have to do? But, of course, as I said, at the end of the day, with the players that are missing from the Spanish team, I do think Portugal should take it. And my player to watch is probably going to be good old Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> Tschüss. 
Although this Portuguese team is so full of such brilliant talent, you know Ronaldo is a player that you can always, always rely on. Now, of course, moving on, you've got Czech Republic versus Switzerland, two underdogs facing each other. Now, of course, Switzerland, obviously the team to beat France in the recent Euros. Of course, a lot of people will be looking at them. Now, of course, although the likes of Borussia Mönchengladbach didn't do well in the Bundesliga, the likes of Jan Sommer had the most saves in the Bundesliga this season. So a goalkeeper that is still very, very reliable. And one major problem is the fact that Czech Republic do not have the likes of Patrick Schick, which might make a lot of Czech Republic fans schick to their stomach, to be honest with you. Stop it. Get some help. I mean, obviously, they are a fantastic squad. They've got fantastic players from Suchek to Sufal to this player to that player. They've got fantastic players everywhere. Once again, you cannot underestimate either of these two teams. But just the fact that Czech Republic are missing Patrick Schick, I feel like that could be a big loss for them. And I am going to end up giving this one to Switzerland. I'm going to say 1-0-2, uh, to be honest with you. I think Switzerland have some fantastic players. And you know what? My player to watch, I'm going to put the likes of Zerdan Shakiri, Although, move to the likes of Chicago, fire in the MLS, and although isn't a top European league, obviously, as we know when he plays for Switzerland, is such a game changer, and I'm making him my player to watch because I think it's going to be interesting to see whether he comes back and he has any new skills that he learns in the MLS. Now, of course, moving on, we've got Croatia versus Austria. Of course, the Real Madrid match as Luka Modric takes on David Alaba. Now, of course, it's going to be a really, really interesting match to watch because, of course, looking at Austria, have not qualified for the upcoming World Cup. Of course, they've had some very very disappointing games as of late we're looking at Croatia once again it is very much I would call it an aging squad they've got fantastic players but I know that I can't really use that as an excuse anymore for why they couldn't do well I mean Luka Modric at what like 37 years old 36 years old absolutely ran the show in the Champions League this season so of course looking at these two teams as much as I would like to say it's very close I feel like Austria obviously have the younger players they've got the more exciting players in my opinion but I do think looking at Croatia kind of what they've brought to the world of football I would say in the last however many years in the last quite a few years they've definitely been been the better team although maybe I could potentially go for a draw in this one but I am going to go for a 3-2 win I think it could be very exciting especially if players like Arnautovic, Sibitz and so on and so forth end up supporting or end up performing for Austria but obviously as I said Croatia as of late although they have brought in quite a few new youngsters as I said it is an aging squad so they have started to replace some of those players with younger players it's going to be interesting to see whether that ends up working out well and I think this is the game that you'll end up seeing it and of course my player to watch I'm very tempted to go for the likes of Ivan Perisic obviously he's linked to move to Tottenham Hotspurs at the moment but as I said Mr. Champions League himself it has to be Luka Modric what a player he is now of course moving on we've got the current winners of the nations league france versus denmark now once again with the likes of denmark i feel like it's almost a team that the world supports from time to time i mean christian Eriksen, as we know fantastic midfielder we know how many brilliant young players there are in this danish team and we've seen that over i would say the last three four years as we know schmeichel although very very good for leicester city is an absolute beast and can be so unstoppable for denmark between the posts so of course looking at france versus denmark i actually believe this could be a very very close game i mean the last time these two teams played against each other in the World Cup in 2018, it went down as a nil-nil draw. So it's definitely not an easy going decision, I could say. I mean, looking at France, I mean, yes, they are obviously the favorites. I mean, you just look at their striker options, for example. To have Olivier Giroud, who just won the Italian League. Obviously, Kylian Mbappe, who just won with PSG. Obviously, you've got Karim Benzema, who just won the Champions League and the Liga with Real Madrid. I mean, that's just the strikers alone, and there are many more to add on to that. It's over. We are screwed. The amount of quality in this French national team is beyond scary. And to be honest with you, I mean, yes, as I said, the last time these two teams played against each other, it was close. I really like this Danish team. But at the end of the day, I do think France have enough quality in their team and they really should be able to take this one. Although I do think it will be a very, very close result. And you know what? I'm going to put down as, as a 1-0, to be honest with you. I think it's going to be that kind of close game. And in terms of a player to watch, it has to be the man who will end up lifting the Ballon d'Or. Kareem the Dream Benzema. That man is golden at the moment. Now, moving on, we've got Belgium versus Netherlands. Now, of course, the big question is coming up. It is a rise. Is, is Belgium leaving their golden generation? Will they no longer have a chance to win the World Cup? I mean, yes, they are missing a lot of top players at the moment. And a lot of their players are aging. But I mean, you just have to look at the fact 
fact that when Romelu Lukaku plays, yes, he's been abysmal for Chelsea this season. But of course, when Romelu Lukaku puts on that Belgian jersey, he plays like no other. Kevin De Bruyne was an absolute beast in the Premier League this season. One of the top goal scorers was the Premier League player of the season. You look at Thibaut Courtois, who pulled off a masterclass in the Champions League final. Belgium still have some top talent. But looking at the likes of Netherlands, once again, what a top quality team. And we saw that at the Euros. We saw it from both teams, to be honest. But obviously, looking at Netherlands, as we know, the amount of young talent in their team. And once again, maybe players who haven't done well at club level this season do well on the national stage. Memphis Depay, he had a decent season number-wise at Barcelona. But when he plays for the Netherlands, he's a beast. And the same goes with so many other players. And it's going to be interesting to see now that Virgil van Dijk is in this competition because he's missed one of the last two uh, due to injury. So once again, with both of these teams having a relatively fully fit squad, it's going to be very, very interesting to see it. I've got no idea how it's going to play out. And I think it really potentially could end up being a draw, to be honest with you. I think these two teams are so fantastic. I do think it will end up going down as a 2-2 draw. And my player to watch, once again, has to be the Ginger Ninja, Kevin De Bruyne. Once again, what an absolute player. Now, of course, moving on to the second last game, we've got Hungary versus England. Now, of course, once again, I feel so sorry for Hungary. They were in the group of death at the recent Euros with the likes of Portugal, France, and Germany. Now, of course, you look at them and they've got the likes of England, Germany, Germany and Italy in the Nations League. <laughs> Can Hungary just not catch a break? Are Hungary going to go starving once again? And I think it is a real possibility. Although I like the Hungary national team, although they performed really well, although maybe their points didn't say so at the Euros, they actually had some solid performances and they pushed a lot of teams to their limit. But versus the likes of England, I do believe England should win this one. And I think it's going to be one of those 2-0 or 3-0 wins where one player scores a fantastic goal like Tammy Abraham and Harry Kane gets a penalty. I think it's going to be one of those games. So of course, it's going to be a really, really really entertaining game. I think Gareth Southgate is going to use this kind of window to really experiment with his team. He wants to get his best team possible for the upcoming World Cup. And in terms of my player to watch, I'm going to go for Tammy Abraham, a man who was an absolute beast in the Serie A this season in the Conference League, obviously introduced to this England team. I think this man will be the next Harry Kane, if you want to call him that. And I think you're going to see it in a fixture like this versus Hungary. Now, of course, that leads us on to our final Nations League League A game. As I said, if you want me to talk about the other leagues, let me know in the comment section down below. But of course, we've got Italy versus Germany. Now, of course, Italy. What went wrong? Being, I mean, knocked out of the World Cup qualifications to, I, I can't even believe it, North Macedonia. Italy, you have had an absolute nightmare. I mean, you're going to want to have to prove yourselves in the Nations League. You have to prove yourselves once more. I mean, you haven't qualified for either of the last two World Cups. That is shocking. And of course, looking at Germany, I mean, the amount of young talents in the squad. I mean, yes, they've got a lot of the older boys. You've got your Thomas Muller. You have your Manuel Neuer. But of course, some of the young talents in the squad is going to be so, so exciting to watch. I think the likes of Eddie Emi, the new Borussia Dortmund striker, is going to be really exciting for Germany. I think he could really, really show off his talents in a game like this. Obviously, there's Moto Stegen as he has picked up an injury of course kind of recovering from that injury but of course he has been left out the squad which I mean when you've got the sweeper keeper Manuel Neuer I mean he wasn't really going to get game time versus Italy anyway I think looking at these two teams once again Italy will want to prove themselves but are they going to once again also kind of an aging squad I've actually this is one of those games where I've got no idea how it could play out but I do think Germany I, I'm going to go for a gigantic 3-1 win I think there's so much young talent and there are so many players playing in their prime at the moment for Germany that I think that they should should be able to get a win. Once again, it's only round one. We'll have to see how things go towards the later stages of the season. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for my Nations League League A predictions. As you can see, all my predict predictions right there. It was not easy to put down some of these predictions, to be honest with you. I guess we'll have to see how it goes. But as I said, right everyone, it's Finn here. Hope you ended up enjoying this video. As I said, if you want me to do other predictions, put it down in the comment section down below. If you ended up enjoying this video, please end up hitting that like button down below. I would really appreciate Appreciated. Along with subscribing, we are insanely close to 5,000 subscribers. And yeah, it should be a very, very good one. But ladies and gentlemen, this has been Finn, FYWN. I believe I've said that for the third time in the last minute. But anywho, guys, until next time, cheers.